Hello, my name is Jen Kelly. I'm a physical oceanographer at Dawson University in uh, beautiful Halifax, Nova Scotia. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to work with sea level data, and uh, in particular, how to re how to do tidal analysis and how to remove a tidal uh, component in order to see perhaps a storm surge. Doing this in the R uh, language, and I'm using what you see on the screen here is uh, R Studio. When you load R Studio, you may see different things in the panels. But in this uh, window, I'm going to show. I'll have uh, the, the, the console, and that's where I'll be typing things. So the first thing is we have to load the OCE package. I'm done with that. If you don't have that installed, you've got to do this. Install.packages OCE and it will download it from uh, the repository of our packages. Um, I won't bother with that. It only takes about maybe 20 seconds, but I won't bother with it because I have a more recent version of OCE on my computer. Everything I'm showing you would work with, with the version you get by doing the command you see right now. So there's a data set that comes along with, with that. Actually, you can see there are two data sets. One is at Tuk Dioptuk, um, up in the Arctic, and the other is in Halifax Harbor, and that's the one I'll be, that's the one that I'll be showing you today. Sorry, I didn't turn off my email beeping. I hope that doesn't get too bad. Um, once you've got the sea level loaded in, you can plot it uh, in this way. Let's go back here. Um, I just clicked on the plots panel so you can see that. Three panels. Uh, this is a time series showing the whole uh, data set, which is a year long. This is just showing a, a, a month, and this is showing a spectrum. If you don't know what a spectrum is, you can kind of ignore that just for now. Um, it's a standard plot, and you can plot as a generic function in R, and it's sort of encoded or specialized to the sea level object. In OCE, if you read, for an example, CTD, object, then plot would do a different thing. Now, uh, there's a function called tidem, and it does a tidal fit, a tidal model to the data. And you can see here the little in yellow. Um, you can give a time and, uh, and an elevation. As it turns out, if your first argument is a sea level object, it extracts the elevation from that. You, you can also tell it which constituents that you want it to look at, um, but I'm going to let that default. Now I'm going to save that, the result of that title analysis to an object called M. So it's finished with that. Um, it's giving a notification that the time series, which was a year, is too short to fit for some constituents. That SA and PI1 and so forth, these are constituents. And what's going on is that uh, TIDAM is employing a pretty standard methodology for preferring one constituent to another nearby constituent. And um, the longer the time series, the closer you can distinguish between two nearby frequencies. I didn't say that quite right, but I think you know what I mean. Um, now I can I can do a summary of that and of the fit. And you see here the these are the total constitu constituents here in this thing, and this is the frequency, the amplitude it found, the phase it found, and a p-value for the fit. It's using uh, LM to do the fit. A p-value that's very low uh, is indicated with three stars and somewhat bigger two stars and bigger uh, one dot. It's just the, the common uh, um, notation that's used by LM, and if you want to learn more about that, do question mark LM, and you'll get a help page on it. z naught or z naught if you're American, is the uh, zero frequency, and you see zero frequency. So that's just the tidal elevation in the mean. It's not probably very interesting. This O1 is one tide. It's about a diurnal, uh, sorry, uh, di yeah, a diurnal tide, um, which happens uh, once a day. That's significant. There's two other uh, tides here. In a in a year long time series, you can, can distinguish between pretty nearby frequencies. I mean, look here between S2 and K2. The fre frequencies 0.083 in both of them, and then the next digit is three in one and about six in the other. So those are pretty nearby. Okay, now we can get predictions from this by doing, and I'm going to call that 
uh, you know, I'll call it OBS for observe. No, sorry. I'm going to call it model. That's good. Uh, model for the, that's good. So I'll do a str of model. And you see we have uh, 6659. That's the number of, uh, very close to 666, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, that's the number of data that we have in this year long time series. Sample that in, at an hour interval. There may be missing values in here as well. Uh, that's fine. So now we've got that. That's the prediction. Let's say that OBS will be the observations, and we can extract them from this uh, sea level object by doing square bracket, square bracket, and quote the name. And the name is elevation. So I mean, I'll just check that that was correct. If I gave the wrong name, it would have null there. So we're good for that. And maybe we'll extract also time. And there we go. So that's good. So we have everything that we need. I'm going to uh, clear this thing. You can see that the New York Times has just told me something there. Um, okay, now I'm going to plot. And let's see. Let's do observe minus predicted. Oh, we could give it. We could give a name for that uh, as as well. Um, not the best name, probably. Okay, it wasn't called prid. What did I call it? Um, model. Okay, I'm going to call it model. It's sort of a stupid name. But we'll go back to that. Right. So this is the, uh, see, the original sea level was going back and forth between about minus one meter and one meter from, from whatever the average was. This is going back and forth much less. It doesn't look very tidal to me. I'm not seeing a spring neat cycle. You know, under full and new moons, you have strong tides. I'm not seeing that. Uh, the other is I'm seeing a strong, more variation in the winter months than in the summer months. That makes sense because this is mid-latitude um, northern hemisphere. This is a northern hemisphere winter. And there's one big spike there. Let's see which where that big, big spike was. Model that big spike was on uh, the year 2003, uh, September 9, 29, at 4 o'clock universal time. That's about uh, midnight uh, local Halifax time. And this, I can tell you from personal experience, is the time when uh, Hurricane Juan was uh, smashing, smashing Halifax up. As it turns out, making a storm surge, it's not really what I noticed. What I noticed that my apartment windows were, looked like they were about to liquefy and fill my apartment. So I hid in the bathroom, in, in the bathtub, in fact. That's my little story. Um, I have to say that I'm making this video on the day that we're hearing about terrible, terrible damage by Hurricane Dorian in the Bahamas. And... Uh, this is, nature can be this way, um, and we'll just, well, I'll leave it at that. Thanks, bye-bye. Um,